Hello and welcome back to the course on deep learning. Now that we've seen neural networks in action, it's time for us to find out how they learn. So let's dive straight into it. There are two fundamentally different approaches to getting a program to do what you want it to do. One is hard-coded coding, where you actually tell the program specific rules and what outcomes you want, and you just guide it throughout the whole way, and you account for all the possible uh, options that the program has to deal with. On the other hand, you have neural networks where you create a facility for the program to be able to understand what it needs to do on its own. So you basically create this neural network where you provide it inputs, you tell it what you want as outputs, and then you let it figure everything out on its own. Two fundamentally different approaches, and that is something to keep in mind as we go through these tutorials. Our goal is to create this network which then learns on its own. We, we're going to avoid trying to put in uh, the rules. And a good example that I can give you right now is, um, this will come further in the course, but it's just a very visual example. For instance, how do you distinguish between a dog and a cat? For on the left side, on the approach that's uh, depicted on the left, you would uh, program things in like uh, the, the cat's ears have to be like this, look out for uh, whiskers, look out for this type of nose, look out for this type of shape uh, of uh, face, look out for these colors. You kind of, you describe all of these things and you'd have conditions like if if the ears are pointy, then cat, if the ears are um, slopping down, then possibly dog and so on. On the other hand, for a neural network, you just code the neural network, so you code the architecture, and then you point the neural network at a folder with all these cats and dogs, with images of cats and dogs, which are already categorized, and you tell it, okay, I've got, you, I've got some images of cats and dogs, go and learn what a cat is, go and learn what a dog is, and the neural network will, on its own, understand everything it needs to understand, and then further down, once it's trained up, when you give it a new image of a cat or a dog, it'll be able to understand what it was. So there, there they are, those are the two fundamentally different approaches, and today we're going to slowly start getting into how that second approach works. All right, so let's get straight to it. Here we have a very basic neural network with a one layer. This is called a single layer feed forward neural network. And it is also called a perceptron. Now, before we proceed, one thing that we do need to adjust is that output value. Right now, you can see that it's just a Y. We need to put a Y hat in there. And the reason for that is usually Y stands for the actual value. And that's what we're going to be using. So Y is going to be the actual value, which uh, we see in reality. Uh, output value is the predicted value by the algorithm, by the neural network. Y hat is the um, output value, basically. That's the denomination for the output value. And the perceptron was first invented in 1957 by Frank Rosenblatt. And his whole idea was to create something that can actually learn um, and uh, adjust itself. And this is what we're going to be looking at now. So... Uh, we've got our perceptron. Let's see how our perceptron learns. So let's say we have some input values uh, that have been supplied to the perceptron um, and, or basically to our neural network. Then uh, the activation function is applied. We have an output. And now we're going to plot the output on a uh, chart. So there it is, our output y hat. Now, what we need to do is, in order to be able to learn, we need to compare the output value to the actual value that we want the neural network to get, right? And that is uh, the value y. And so if we plot it here, you'll see that there's a bit of a difference. Now, we're going to calculate a function called the cost function. It's calculated as one half of the difference, of the squared difference between the actual value and output value. Now, there, there are many ways you can come up with a cost function. There are many different cost functions that you can use. Uh, this is probably the most commonly used cost function. And um, why it is specifically this function that we use, we'll find out further down when we're talking about a gradient de descent. But for now, we're just going to uh, agree that this is the cost function. And basically what the cost function is telling us is uh, what is the error that you have in your prediction. And... Um, our goal is to minimize the cost function because the the lower the cost function, the closer the y hat is to y. 
Okay, so as long as we agree on that, let's proceed. So basically from here, what happens is uh, there is our cost function. And from here, what happens is now we're going to, uh, once we've compared, now we're going to feed this uh, information back into uh, the neural network. So there we go. There's um, the information going back into the neural network and it goes to the weights and the weights get updated. Basically, the only thing that we have control of in this very simple neural network are the weights, W1, W2, all the way to Wm. And uh, our goal is to minimize the cost function, so all we can do is update the weight. So we update the weights, um, tweak them a little bit, and how exactly we'll find out further down, but for now, we, we agree that we update the weights, and then we continue. So, But here, I've put up this... Uh, screenshot of the data just to make some one point very clear that right now throughout this whole experiment everything we're doing right now we're dealing with just the one row so we're dealing with we have a data set of one row where we have uh, for instance we're dealing with uh, how long uh, you study like uh, the variable that we're predicting is what uh, what uh, results you're going to get on an exam and the dependent independent variables that we have is how many hours did you study for how many hours did you sleep and what did you get on the quiz in the, the mid semester so in in the middle of the semester there's a quiz what percentage did you get there so based on those variables we're trying to predict what um, score you'll get for the exam and in exam the 93 percent that's the actual value so that's why so uh, so we feed these three values into our neural network again for the second time now. Um, and then we're going to be comparing the result to Y. So let's see how this works. We feed these values into the neural network. Everything gets adjusted and uh, weights get adjusted. So as you can see, um, let's do this again. We're going to feed the values. Again, the point here is that we're feeding in these same values. So we only have one row. We're trying to, we're training on one row. This is because this is just a very simple, basic example. Then we'll see what happens when there's more rows. So again, we feed these rows in. Our cost functions get adjusted. As you can see, everything uh, happens along uh, those lines again. So as you can see, every time our Y hat is changing because we've tweaked the weights, our Y hat is changing, our cost function is changing. Let's have a look again. So we feed those in, Y hat is changing, cost function is changing. We get information back, feedback to the weights so that the weights get adjusted again. We feed in the same values every time. Everything gets adjusted, goes back to the weights. And one more time, feed in, okay. And another time, so we've adjusted the weight, adjusted the weights, we feed in the information. Uh huh. And there we go. So uh, now this time the y hat is equal to y, cost functional zero. Usually you won't get cost function equal to zero, but this is a very simple example. So hopefully all that made sense. Every time we feed in exactly that same row, because just in this case we're just dealing with that one row into our neural network where then uh, the weights get, the values get multiplied by the weights, the activation function is applied, we get y hat, y hat is compared to y, then we see how the cost function has changed, feed, back, feed that information back into the neural network and then just adjust the weights again. Um, and then we repeat the same process again with the same exact row, uh, we're trying to minimize that cost function. So up until now, we've been dealing with just that one row. Let's see what happens when you have multiple rows. So here's the full data set. We have eight rows of uh, how many hours you slept, or maybe these are uh, different students in day, taking the same exam, how many other hours they studied, how many hours they slept before the exam, what they get on the quiz, and their final result on the test. And as you can see here, on the left, I've got eight of these perceptrons. Actually, they are all the same perceptrons, so this is also important to understand. I just multiplied it or like duplicated eight times just so that we can um, uh, conceptually understand. But the important thing here, it's the same neural network. We're uh, going to be feeding these into the one same neural network. So let's go, let's get started. So one um, epoch, as you'll hear Hadlan mentioning, one epoch is when we go through a whole data set and we train our uh, neural network on, on all of these uh, rows. So let's go, let's get started. So there's our first row, and there's y hat for the first row. There's the second row, there's y hat for the second row. So again, it's been fed into the same neural network every time. I'm j I've just copied them several times so we can visually see how this is happening. Then again, it's, it's happening again. That's third row, fourth row, 
there's our y hat for the fourth row and so on. Basically, then we get the same values for the remaining four rows as well. So every time we just feed in a row into um, our neural network, we get a value. Um, then we compare to the actual values. So there are the actual values. So for every single row, we have an actual value. And now, based on all of these differences between y hat and y, we can calculate the cost function, which is the sum of all of those um, squared uh, differences between y hat and y, and all of that is halved. And there's our cost function. And basically, now what we do after we have the full cost function, we go back and we update the weights. We update w1, w2, w3. And the important thing to remember here is that all of these um, perceptrons, all of these neural networks is actually one neural network. So there's not eight of them, there's just one. And when we update the weights, we're going to update the weights in that one neural network. So basically the weights are going to be the same for all of the rows. So it's not the case that every row has its own weights. No, all the rows share the weights. And so that's why we uh, looked at the cost function, which is the sum of the uh, square differences. And then we updated the weights. And now from here, that was just one iteration. Next, we're going to run this whole thing again. We're going to uh, feed every single row into the neural network, find out our cost function, and do this whole process again. So just as we saw previously, uh, where we had just one row and we were doing everything again and again and again, again, same thing here, but now we're going to be doing it for eight rows or 800 rows or 8,000 rows, however many rows you have in your data set, um, you do this process and then you calculate the cost function. And the goal here is to minimize the cost function uh, and uh, to get, as soon as you've found the minimum of the cost function, that is your final neural network. That means your weights have been adjusted and you have um, found the optimal uh, weights for uh, this uh, data set that you, you, you're training on and you're ready to proceed to the testing phase or to the application phase. And this whole process is called back propagation. So some additional reading that you might want to do for the cost function. And I know we, we just talked about one and there are many different ones. A good article is located on cross-validated. Uh, it's called a list of cost functions used in neural networks alongside applications. So the URL is there, but you can just Google for that exact search term or search phrase and you will that this one will be the first one that pops up it's actually got some good examples and application uh, or use cases for uh, different cost functions so if you're interested to learn more about cost functions check out this article and on that note i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial i look forward to seeing you next time until then enjoy deep learning